So there is a reason why everybody recommends these speakers for this price range. What's up, Jay here, and in this video I am going to be doing something a little bit different from what I normally do while simultaneously fulfilling uh, many requests that I've been getting. So in this video I am going to be giving you my take on the highly praised JBL LSR 305 powered monitors. So the LSR 305s have a stated frequency range of 42 Hz to 24 kilohertz an SPL of 108 decibels C-weighted. As you can see, there is a five inch woofer here, which is the five part of 305, a one inch soft dome tweeter, and each speaker is powered by a 41 watt class D amplifier. So starting on the back of the speaker, we can see the port. Apparently this is some sort of patented technology port. I don't know what's so special about a port that they can patent it, but because it is rear ported, yeah. But because it is rear ported, just keep in mind that these probably won't do so well up against a wall. For inputs, these speakers can accept either a quarter inch TRS connector or a balanced three pin XLR. There is an input sensitivity of plus four or minus 10 decibels. I am not sure if this is meant to correspond to which input you're using or if it's meant to, uh, to kind of tame the signal coming into it depending on what your source is. We also have low frequency and high frequency trims of plus or minus two decibels as well as uh, a neutral setting. So three settings for each of those. So these are to uh, adjust the speakers to your room. So if you get, if your highs are a little peaky or if your uh, bass is a little too boomy, you can adjust that, or if your bass is a little lacking, you can... The trims are very fine grain adjustments, so they'll do a little bit, but not too much. So, you know, two decibels is pretty much just perceptible, but it does give you a four decibel swing in either direction. Finally, we have a, a stepped volume knob here. This does just kind of click into place at each one. At least there are ten marked volume positions with uh, the halfway points being selectable, so 20 different uh, volume adjustments for the volume knob. And finally we have a standard grounded plug in the back and in on off switch. So when you're adjusting the volume on a powered monitor, you generally feed the signal through a, uh, a preamp of some sort so that you can actually control the volume from there, and that'll adjust the signal going into the speaker so you set the max amplification that you would like. Generally, you don't want to set an amplifier all the way up to its highest volume because then you can get some distortion and clipping. You want to leave it between halfway and three quarters. I like to adjust mine to where when I set the volume on my amp to something that's comfortably listenable for my headphones, if I turn on the speakers, that same volume on the amp will be uh, about the same, just like a nice comf comfortably listenable volume. So now I'm gonna turn this one around and we are going to talk about how these things perform. So being five, uh, five inch woofers, they are a little small. You know, they're, they're a decently small form factor for a bookshelf speaker. Not, not the smallest, but certainly not too big. I do want to mention that with the, uh, the five inch woofer, even though they are stated to go down to like 42 decibels, you generally, they, they do bass well, they do like nice, tight, good control bass, but the, uh, the, the woofers don't really extend that low. You know, you, you'll be lucky to get down to 80, 80 to 100 hertz is I think somewhere where it kind of cuts off. If you have something that can, uh, if you have something like a, uh, the go rack that I have, little box with a sub synth that can actually make these things produce a good amount of bass, but there's still like a certain point where once it gets so low, it just cuts it out. So there's a reason why so many people recommend and own these speakers, and that's just because of their overall value for the money. With their relatively small form factor, you can put them on your desk in a near-field listening setup, 
but they also get plenty loud and are very low distortion enough to sit out in a room. Personally, I find the sound that they produce to be just a little thin and a little bright, but for the money, I can't really complain about that, and they still sound phenomenal. But features and sound quality aside, there is something else that makes the LSR 305 stand out among its competition, and a large part of why it is so recommended, and that is what JBL calls their image control waveguide, and that's this crazy shaped horn right here. And what that does, along with this tweeter, I don't know if the tweeter is special or if it just has everything to do with this, this waveguide, but the imaging on these speakers is phenomenal. They literally have perfect imaging, so you get a perfect center image and you get perfect panning from side to side. When you're listening to music, you can place each instrument not only in, uh, in horizontal space, but in three-dimensional space. So you can tell that the singer is right here, and that the, uh, well I guess, coming for you guys, you can tell that the singer is here, and the drums are back here, and the guitarist is right off to the side here, and there's somebody with like a trumpet back here. I mean, you, you can just place each thing, and when you're listening to these, when I have these set up on my desk, and I'm listening with them, and it's, it's very near field. The image does get really tight the, the, uh, the closer you have them together, but it's almost like I can reach out and grab whatever's making the sound. And it's just, the, the way that these speakers do that is incredible. And for the money, it's... So as I just mentioned, the LSR 305s do a little bit better when they're further apart. If you can get them, I'm blinking. So when you have these speakers really close together, um, kind of like this, but maybe a little bit further out to where you would generally have a, a seating position at your desk and then like an equilateral triangle with the speakers, they tend to get, the sound stage tends to get a little bit congested. It, it sounds much better if you spread them out, it opens it up a lot more. But that being said, I honestly, I myself have them sitting on my desk and that's the way I use them. And uh, you know, it's space is a limiting factor but they sound perfectly fine that way, and you know, they're not going anywhere. So as amazing as the imaging and the sound stage of these speakers are, with all the sounds that come between the speakers, these are not very good at producing sound outside of the speakers. So I have like my Elax, they, uh, they're, they're capable of throwing sound to like beside me or behind me sometimes. Those are just crazy, but these, just have like a nice perfect image between the speakers. But for two, two to three hundred dollars, depending on, on how much you can get them for, these are an incredible buy in that price range and they have built-in amps. Okay, so in case you're not familiar with exactly what a powered monitor is, it's a speaker, right? And it has all the amplification built into it. And the good thing about the uh, LSR 305s is they're sold, you can buy them in a pair, but they're generally sold as individual units, and they are fully uh, self-contained. So some powered monitors come in pairs only, and you'll get one of the speakers that has the amplifier in it, and you feed the source to that, and then it has another wire that goes out to the second speaker, and that's how it powers the, and so both speakers are powered off of the same amplifier. But with the LSR 305s, each speaker has its own source input, each speaker has its own amplifier, so these can be used completely separately by themselves or together. There's no need to run a wire between the two. But so, as I was saying, with the powered monitors, since they have a built-in amplifier, you feed a line-level signal into one of the inputs. So while you can take your speakers and every time you want to change the volume, you can reach to the back here and adjust the volume knob. It's not really the best way to do it because you have two speakers and you'd have to adjust both of them every time you want to change the volume. The best way is to either have something like the SIS here, which has a uh, RCA inputs and outputs. And the SIS actually acts as both a switch and a preamp, but you can get things that just have a line in and a line out and then the volume knob on the back, on the front. So you would take your DAC and feed your DAC into the inputs, 
and then you would take the outputs and feed each of these out to one of the speakers and then you can adjust the volume of your speakers with the preamp. If you're also a headphone enthusiast and you're going to be buying a headphone amp to drive your headphones, another thing that you can do is buy one that has a built-in preamp. A lot of the higher-end amps like the Jotunheim have built-in preamps and even some of the uh, the more entry-level amps like the Magni 2, but I think you have to get the Magni 2 Uber to get the preamp. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's right. So one more thing worth mentioning with the uh, LSR 305s, they are very sensitive speakers. So if you're using long runs of RCA or just a single-ended cable, it can pick up a lot of noise and you'll get like a low-level hiss in the speakers. So if you have the equipment for it, if you can afford it, they, uh, using the balanced input helps get rid of that, that just kind of low hiss that you can hear. Let me grab the, the go rack here. So this is something that you can you can actually use as a preamp. It has a volume knob here. You could use single-ended inputs. So if you did, imagine this is my DAC. If you had a short short cable, so you're not going to get much noise introduced into a short run single-ended cable. You just do a short cable from your DAC into the go rack here, and then you can use the balanced outputs to go out to the LSR 305s. This also has the subsynth built in and a whole bunch of other equalizer stuff. So it's it's a really neat little little package. And it also has an auxiliary input. So if you want to feed audio from your phone or something out to your speakers, you can do that too. And like I said, with the volume control, you can use it as a preamp. So this is a neat little little thing. And if you don't want to spend, I mean I think it's like $30. If you don't want to spend the money on a headphone amp with balanced pre-outs. Uh, then this is a good solution. So another problem that people often run into with powered monitors like the JBL LSR 305s is that when they're feeding them from a DAC like the iDAC 2 by iFi here, the, the DAC is powered and has signal via USB. So generally you plug the DAC into your computer, the computer is plugged in with a, uh, a three-prong plug so it's grounded, the powered monitors here are plugged in with three ground or three pin plugs, so they are also grounded. You'll generally have them close to each other, especially if you're doing like a desktop setup like I do. And because the because of that signal chain and they're on the same circuit, they uh, they form what's called a ground loop, and that results in a buzzing sound out of the speakers, and it can actually get really obnoxious. So there are two ways to fix that. One is with a ground loop isolator that would take the, uh, the RCAs and it just sits in between your RCA cables. So you'd have two RCA cables. Uh, the cheap ones work, but they don't work that well. Uh, honestly, if you're going to buy something, you might as well. So if you're going to buy something in that setup, you might as well buy something like the GoRack because the uh, XLR will actually fix, and so instead of using a ground loop isolator, the XLR inputs will actually uh, filter out that ground loop buzz. All right guys, well thanks for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. I really hope I hit all my talking points. There's a lot to cover with these things. Like I said, I mean, if you're in the market for two to $300 speakers, you can generally get them for 200, 250 don't pay 300 for these and make sure if you find a good price like if you find them for 150 make sure that's not for just one speaker all right well thanks again for watching please like the video if you liked it dislike it if you disliked it feel free to subscribe i'm uh going i'm i'm taking a new approach to my videos because it's shooting on and then editing it and then releasing it is just too long of a process you know obviously i've only had two videos out over the last two months. So this time I'm gonna just start like shooting uh, a few videos at a time and then editing them over a few weeks and trying to get one released per week. So we'll see how that goes. Again, stay tuned and I will see you in the next one.